You're listening to Whispers of War. Hello everyone and welcome to Wisps of War, show number 27. I'm your host Sil. Let's talk about how my weekend WoW was. I am still leveling my paladin. At the moment he's running around in Stranglethornville and you know it's so easy now that there is no specific area that you have to go to for your levels and it's all just oh I think I'll go here maybe I'll go here next. So I'm, I'm enjoying it. Uh, I have to admit that the Water Strider mount is such a game changer because now I can just walk over to all the islands in Stranglethorn and it makes it a lot easier to do those pirate quests. So um, yeah, I'm enjoying that. I'm actually leveling as a tank. I should really jump into some dungeons. And after listening to Dungeon Fables, I, I really feel more inclined to go back to those low level dungeons just to to see some things and uh, yeah I, I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. I really really like the Paladin um, but I have a suspicion that I will be switching between my Warrior and my Paladin every week just because it's a lot of fun. Now however I say that but I might actually have to take a little bit of a break on these two because we I think we only have two weeks left until 8.1.5 rolls out, which means that we get, you know, all the the new races, the reps and everything that counts then, and I think we also get more character slots available to us then, and you know how bad that is for me. <laughs> so, um, I figured why not set myself a little goal. I, I've done most of the things now on my, my um, Rogue on the Horde side, so I don't really feel that I need to do much on her. I will jump into some dungeons. I keep saying this every week, but I will do it eventually. Um, but I feel like I need to finish things up on my druid on the alliance side. So what I'm going to plan for the next two weeks is to just go through all the zones, finish all the zones, finish the, the war campaign. I'm almost finished with it, but finish that war campaign and get all my reputation up as much as I can and hopefully once the patch drops I will have unlocked all the races and I can just start creating to my heart's desire and you know hating my life for all the alts that I'm creating. So that's going to keep me busy for the next two weeks because I think it's two weeks that we're getting uh, the patch then. I think it is the 13th of March if I'm correct for the EU. So I have to unlock all the things um, in regards to all those character slots opening up. Now I've said that, oh, I would like, you know, a discount on all the character transfers I'm doing. I can't see that really happening, but I have decided that in the end I might just only transfer one character, uh, which is my my little Draenei Shaman, because I, I, I've had her for a very long time, and I think it was Burning Crusade. and. I do miss playing her and I think I want her on my main server now and the rest I think I'll just all level from scratch uh, because like I said I'm a masochist and um, at least that way I can go a little bit okay what don't I have yet um, for in case we get heirlooms and, and things like that or heirloom gear I mean is it heirloom gear or heritage gear that's what I meant so yeah I um, I need to plan I need to plan a lot and I need to delete a lot of characters as well um, because I think it's still a maximum of 50 isn't it? I think so. So I will need to uh, count some of my characters and make sure that I can create all 30 on that one server. Anyhow, let's go back to um, to all the other things. I actually did more of LFR on my rogue. I, uh, I jumped into the first wing of um, the Zara lore and I really enjoyed it. I, I think it's a, a really great raid, even the first wing. I'm really enjoying the, the cutscenes and yeah, I, I understand now why the Zara lore is such a shit place to uh, to navigate through because it's great for a raid. <laughs> very, very shit compared to uh, Boralus um, with, with, you know, in regards to all of that. 
if you want to see a really good video about that, Taliesin and Evital made a great video about all the things they hate. <laughs> I think it's more Taliesin who hates uh, the Tsar, Alor, or at least, you know, the troll area. And I think he's very right with some of those points. Um, but I am going to talk a little bit about that as well with the guest of the week. So I will leave you now with an interview with Rob from the Training Dummies. It was lovely talking to him again. Um, me and Rob have talked on several podcasts in the, in the past. So I'm very happy uh, that after a while we've talked again. So I hope you enjoyed this interview as much as I enjoy having it. And I will see you on the flip side. And today I am joined by someone I've talked to quite a bit, I think, in the past. But it's been a while since we, we last spoke. I think it might be about five years now. And it's the wonderful Rob from the Training Dummies. Hey, Syl, thank you so much. I really and appreciate you know what? it. I'm so happy to hear your voice again because it's been far too long. The, As they say at Chick-fil-A over here in the States, the pleasure is mine. <laughs> Is that what they say? Yeah, it's a uh, it's a little, it's like a fast food restaurant that does chicken stuff, and no matter like no matter what you say, like the response is supposed to be the pleasure is mine. So <laughs> it's supposed to be like a kind of classy and warm and welcoming. So. Ah, so you learned. Which are all things that I'm not, but I will. I'll, oh I'll, please, <laughs> oh please. Right. Well, let's let's talk about yourself. Then, for those that don't know you, can you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and your oh, about me? Past well. Stuff? <laughs> Uh, my mom met my dad. In, <laughs> uh, maybe not that far back. <laughs> okay, maybe not that far. All right. Um, let's see. I uh, my name's Rob. You can. I I, th I think I kind of mean I dug into Twitter like very early on. Whatever it was like 2007 maybe. Uh, I dug in there and kind of found um, the Warcraft and gaming community kind of really flourishing at that time mm -hmm. and. Um, I could even go into a little bit about the what, how I met, like the Daryl and Hoofit and those guys. Yeah, um, of course. Yeah. Okay. So I won't. I won't. I'll try not to take too much time because man, when I sidebar, these stories take forever. But okay. So yeah, I dug into the Warcraft community on Twitter, and, uh, and one day I was working, and uh, I got this was back before smartphones, so I actually got a butt dial from a friend of mine, and <laughs> he's like, "Hey, man, what are you doing?" And I was like, not much. What have you been up to? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, just playing video games. What are you playing? Warcraft. Oh, really? What server? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you should come check it out. So I went and checked out his uh, his guild. Mm -hmm. And that's where I met Daryl and uh, Taylor or Hoofit. And then you know, we had played together for, for a while. That was in, I want to say that was 2008, 2009-ish. It was Wrath of the Lich King, and there was a there was this complete vibe of like not min maxing, but like helping each other to figure out the how to be efficient and to do things really good. And um, and at the time, they were looking for a raid healer, and I had just leveled up my paladin, and I was like, sure, I'll do it. And you know, and I had no idea what raid healing looked like, so I went in and they taught me all about mouse over macros. So you didn't need an add on to do everything; you just put in. A series of text that allowed you to kind of change the way your abilities work by being able to just mouse over a person or their or their unit frame mm -hmm. and i was like oh my gosh this is amazing and you could add little variations of you know tar doing a target or a target of target so you know for paladins at the time um judgment for a holy paladin was a way that you regenerated mana mm -hmm. But I didn't want to keep clicking on the boss in order to do judgment. So he showed me this way that you could actually, you could just mouse over the tank as you were healing the tank, and then hit this button, and it would still cast judgment on the on the enemy. Mm -hmm. So all these little things, I'm like, this is great, and really, really kind of dug into that. And hey, if you figured out how to do this, oh my gosh, yeah, let's you know talk about talent builds and and all this stuff. And so we kind of our love for that kind of blossomed into you like you know pod, the wow podcasting was starting to take off at the time and we were like hey we you know we could do this you know there's a few shows out there that you know i feel like we could do this so we started the training dummies at that time and um kind of dug into the premise of you know just a couple of friends having a conversation about how to have fun and and be efficient and, and be successful in the game and and it just kind of grew from there um 
Taylor stuck around for I think about 30 episodes and then I think he kind of decided it it wasn't quite what he wanted to do but Daryl and I picked it up and ran from there and we have we've done uh, we've branched out over the years you know you kind of have to yeah kind of have to evolve a little bit but we've branched out a little bit Um, you know we've kind of rebooted the show into you know of course we're doing the live streaming on Twitch thing and stuff but we we started covering stuff besides Warcraft, but it's still all Blizzard focused. So mm-hmm. we've done a few Hearthstone shows, we've done some Heroes of the Storm shows, done some Overwatch shows. You know, the bread and butter always seems to come back to World of Warcraft because that's basically our kind of our favorite where we always land. You know, so everything from class guides to community to uh, you know, I was messaging with uh, Salute Bag earlier and talking to him about coming back on and, and talking about their mythic progression or or um, the mythic plus or the mdi stuff you know so we kind of kind of cover a little bit of everything and sometimes uh you know we we add in different episodes that we that are less focused that are just us kind of just talking about whatever um or alliance leveling you know because mm-hmm. <laughs> spoiler we don't play alliance but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we kind of branched out a little bit, but still the premise is still there uh, to have fun and to try to find ways to be more successful or to, you know, like I said, the class guides, mm-hmm. bringing on the guide writers from, from Wildhead or Icy Veins or, you know, some some of the popular raiders to talk about how you can kick butt at your, uh, your desired class and spec. Yeah, because you guys have been around for, I think you said to me, seven years now? Yeah, it'll be seven years in May or June, I think. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a while, huh? <laughs> That's, honestly, that is quite a feat, I think, um, nowadays. for I mean, talking for myself, you know, who switched a lot. I think it, it's, it's really good that you guys have been around for that long. Because um, I remember, I think... I think it was one of your class guides that got me into listening to your podcast mm. back in the day. Because I was like, oh, I want to know how maybe I can play my class more efficient. <laughs> so uh-huh. I started listening to it. And I really just like the dynamic between you and, um, and your co-host. And that, that just, you know, it's rare that you get such good dynamics because you see a lot of people switching constantly. Mm-hmm. And like we said before the show, you know, you two have just always been so consistent and you can just hear that you and Daryl are just so good as a team. That's super awesome. Um, Cause it, it is true. Uh, we are definitely friends outside of game, right? Uh, last, mm-hmm. last summer we, he and I both took our wives down to, uh, to Cabo in Mexico. And it was just, just, we left the kids at home and uh, not unattended, of course, but we went down and, and just spent a few days down there with our wives and just hung out and had a blast. So, like, we and that was outside of BlizzCon. So, we we're actually doing life outside of game, you know, a lot. You know, we're texting each other. Daryl and I are pushing each other on, uh, you know, on some half marathon training that mm-hmm. we're going through. So, there's a lot of things that are, it's so crazy that he lives up in Canada, you know, thousands of miles away, yet he's probably my best friend, you know, like one of the people I talk to on a daily basis and you know keep up with each other and you know if that's i don't know there's some i've got actual real life proof of the whole like the in, people on the internet can be real friends thing going on so. yeah, exactly exactly no i love it i love love the dynamics so you you've already said you know a little bit of um a spoiler that you both play horde mm-hmm. any any particular reason why you went horde side horde is better Better. Like, I love uh, that. I've got my tactical <laughs> show. Oh, it's just better. <laughs> or bloodlust is better. I don't know. There you could. Uh, you know, that's kind of where I, where I landed when I started playing. That's kind of where all my friends were. Mm-hmm. And I have certainly dipped my toe into alliance over the years. You know, we had an alliance version of our guild over on another server, and, uh, and I, I have some close friends that are alliance through and through um and i and i have plenty of tunes that i love on both sides but i always come back to the horde and not saying i wouldn't ever play alliance but i don't really have a reason to like Mm -hmm. i don't really have a reason for that to be my you know my main home for now yeah i think when you start out on a a certain side and that's where all your contacts are 
mm-hmm. it's quite difficult switching it, isn't it? Un- unless you find a new community, but otherwise it's very, very difficult. Well, we have, uh, we've kind of made it a point to that our guild is a friends and family guild mm-hmm. and it's not a podcast guild or a warehouse guild, you know, that you see, mm. uh, I'm not going to name names, but there's a few podcasts yeah. or communities out there that are developed out of, you know, out of what their, their community base and all the folks that join. And next thing you know, there's thousands and thousands of people in there and there's dozens of raid teams within that. And we kind of like, we, we, we liked our environment. You know, we liked our friends and family thing. Mm-hmm. And it's that's not to say that it's not open to people. You know, we've had we've had folks from the community that have that have actually joined and become a great part of what's going on. But it's not entirely. We don't push for that. So it's easier to. I don't know. I feel like there's a certain there's a certain level of camaraderie that we have because, like, I know somebody or you know, hey, that's you know somebody you know like couple couple friends of ours like james and missy you know they're they're a couple and we've got them both in there and you know or daryl and his wife play you know or you know our our main tank and one of our dps is uh is a husband and wife that we that we met from the community and they they live up in canada and you know daryl has has actually hung out with them in real life and they've they've set up you know meet up events and stuff like that so it's it's like we're not we're not opposed to that but it's real our focus is just on people that we know and being able to kind of facilitate this this friendship yeah and that's good i think i think that's really really nice so i'm, I'm sure that we'll talk about this in in the main topic um but how did you start your your love for world of warcraft how did it oh start? man um i was playing some other mmos mm-hmm at the time and kind of hopping around and there was one i i gotta remember i can't remember the name of it it was like alloads online yeah that sounds familiar <laughs> yeah i bet i could look it up but um it it was the same thing it was a fantasy mmo and uh you know i had sunk into that pretty good and, and it was way way earlier on in the its life cycle and i think the level cap was 40 and it was completely free to play, except for the fact if you wanted to do anything, like amount cost money, and then amount like real life money, not actual. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the mount had a like you had to feed it food, which cost real life money. And if you didn't feed it food, it would start going slower and slower and slower till it was the same as a walking pace, anyways. Okay. And so I'm doing all this stuff, and I'm like, man, this is, I don't know, seems like. I was really just trying to push the free to play thing because you know budget at the time and stuff like that and and uh i got a couple of my friends to try it out and uh one friend of mine shout out to greg um he was like man why are you even playing this you should just play warcraft all the everything that you're trying to do is just included and i was like yeah i don't know though it's, it's 15 dollars a month and it's just <laughs> and he was like no nah, man and so he he got me he got me started on that you know i did the he recruited me and you get a free, however, you know, a free month of game time. And then a, there was a, a few times where he, he would, uh, you know, he'd throw some sub time at me and, and I was immediately hooked from there. It was just like everything that I had been kind of messing around with before cranked up to like another level and the quality was there and the content was there. And it was, you know, me coming in at that time, I think it was more like, like I said, it was a uh, wrath. There was just so much more to do than, than uh, than this earlier kind of smaller MMO, so jumped in and fell in love from there. Nice, that's very nice. Yeah. So it, that's been quite a while now. So we are going to talk about our main subject for for this uh, topic or for this for this week's interview, and we were going to discuss nostalgia. Mm-hmm. So that's quite broad. So, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I thought, okay, let's let's just put it back to several things that we've we've had in the past. So, when you think of World of Warcraft, you know, when you first started, and what are some of the like images that you go like, oh yeah, I remember seeing that and that feeling of awe. And mm-hmm. what do you remember? What's funny is the answer to that um, is all over the place, right? It's. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a night elf hunter running around dark shore, you know. Yeah. Because um, that's kind of where one of the very first tunes that I had rolled um, 
Before it got destroyed, of course. Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah, before the the barons got torn in half, everything got messed up. But um, yeah, just playing playing that, um, working my way up. I wanted to I wanted to play a Death Knight so bad, but you had to have a certain level of character, you know, to mm-hmm. be able to start one and uh, doing. It's funny that this is nostalgia, but I like when I think about the game, I think about the life cycle of the game. You think about uh, the Lich King, the Wrath mm-hmm. of the Lich King expansion, and you're like, that wasn't that long ago, right? Because when you look at the, the the way the expansions are rolled out, you know that was like in my head that was like that was only a couple of expansions ago, right? But, mm-hmm. but I guess that was when did that even come out? 2007, 2000. I believe so. Because that was like over 10 years ago right i mean i've been playing for over you know like a decade at this point so i guess i'm not uh you know people use the term like wrath baby like oh you're you starting wrath uh you're new you know kind of mm-hmm. kind of like a well shoot man if you did, if you only started in wrath that wasn't that long ago it is but, now <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like we've come a long way since then we're i think we're farther away from we're farther away from Wrath than than Wrath was from the inception of the game. So, absolutely, yeah, because Wrath came out uh, somewhere in two thousand eight. Okay, I, I just looked it up on the internet because okay, you okay. know I, I don't remember stuff like that anymore. It's just <laughs> everything after like yesterday, yeah. I forgot. So, <laughs> no, but yeah, you're absolutely right about that. It's um, it's strange how time just completely passes by and you're like well, that wasn't that long ago actually yeah, yeah it was oh that's close to get off my lawn territory too though, <laughs> where you're like well, that's what... and wrath, holy pal or you know paladin and wrath was the best thing ever and same but... with resto druid they're fucking yeah. gods they were huh yeah, yeah. man there's was... but like i i i don't know you can we can pick apart how how things have changed and how you yeah you i'm, I'm happy to uh to discuss it because you know we will be going back to it again once classic rolls out that's right um so tell me what's your what's your opinion on the way that the uh, the talent trees and some of the the structure of how specs work now do you do you like that better than it than back in the day or it's you know i think it is it's a, a it's difficult because there's pros and cons for everything mm-hmm. being i mean i used to play a balanced druid when balanced druid, druids didn't even really exist yeah um so back having those old talent trees it was always a bit like okay i think i'll go for this and this and this and this should work um mm-hmm. just to get like that final point in whatever for a druid you were a mana battery so you just needed interface and then you had some other points to, that you could spend um and I think there was a, a certain cookie cutter build, but looking at what we have now, yeah, it's it's maybe more simplified, but mm-hmm. there's still cookie cutter builds that people go, now you sh- really should take this or this, this is useless. Mm-hmm. So in that respect, I don't think much has changed. I think that it's more clearer now what's going on, but that is not to say that I sometimes do miss the talent trees. You know, when you spec in one thing and it opens something else up, mm-hmm. I, I don't know what it is, but maybe that's my D&D background, but I miss that. I quite like that. There was definitely uh, something to be said for, you know, like you mentioned, the, the Druid thing. The Druid at that time was a super hybrid class. Like mm. very, a lot of what was going on, you would dig down into, you know, oh, I got to get this talent out of this tree, but it's, you know, three or four levels down there. So you kind of mm. got to work your way down and get that. and then And then, you know... And I don't think bears were really a thing at the time. You know, it was no. you could turn into a bear, but it wasn't it wasn't like what you would do, you know. No. Um, yeah, but there's I don't know. The things have changed so much. Talking about I remember we used to talk about the hybrid tax. Well if you could do mul- multiple things, you shouldn't be good at multiple things. Mm-hmm. So so it was just weird, like, you know, for for even Death Knights, well you need this one talent out of this tree. But even though you didn't play that spec, but so you had to dig way down into that tree to get that talent because it had some synergy with this other one. So if you played Frost, and I think Frost was a tank at the time too, you know, you would have to yeah. be able to take these different talents. And I, I think there's a lot more depth to it. Um, even though there there was cookie cutter ways to do it, there's always been websites, you know, 
Thoughtbot and and like all oh, these yeah. all these different ways of uh, you know communicating that information out of here's what you need and and here's the best thing to do you know. And but, I, I think we never will really escape that. I mean, you see that with the add-ons, like things like "Tell me when." Uh huh. Yeah. You know. Well, I don't. I don't necessarily want to escape that, right? Mm-hmm. I I like to know the best way to do things, but I don't like to be the guy who goes in and spends hours and hours and hours testing and simming and getting on a training dummy <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and and working all that out, right? If there's if one town's better than the other, then cool, just tell me, and and like I, I'll educate myself. I want to know why, you know. Mm-hmm. Or if something feels better than another one, or you know, hey, if this passive one is just fine, then I'll take that. But, um, like I, there's always going to be a place for that. I think the the community has a, a lot. It's a lot of different kinds of people and minds and things going on. So there's people that love to get in there and do the math and figure that out, and then you know other people that like to share the information and. And you got us who like to share other people's information or, you know, kind of be the, the messenger or the, or the conduit to where they, we can reach out and get, get somebody who knows what they're talking about and, and hash that out with them and go, okay, that's, here's the best way to do that. Um, so that's always going to be around and I don't, I don't have a problem with that. I think, I don't know. I like, I like the way I remember what was at the end of Cata going into Mist when they had kind of swapped over to, or was it in Cata? I'm trying to remember when they, when they, uh, you know, it's just, it was the end of Cata when we had swapped over to the new talent system. I think, yeah, because they did a massive overhaul of yeah. everything, didn't they? Yep. And it was like the, the, the talent trees that you see now. I mean, there's people that probably don't remember the old talent trees. If you like go online and Google, like the Warcraft talent trees of, you know, of Cataclysm and, and prior to that, they were just like these crazy, like, it was just this wall of different icons and you could put different, you know, the wall, this one you would have to put three points into and it would give you like 2% more crit mm. than this one, you know, all these different things. It just seemed like, I don't know, some of them were talk about, you know, people get mad at things not being fun or compelling now, but like some of that stuff was like <laughs> 1% more damage. Well, that's not, that's not it's engaging. Not, no, but, exactly. <laughs> but, but 1% need- more damage is, is 1% more damage, you know, so. Yeah, no, I, I, it baffles me still. I mean, it had something unique, but on the other hand, it was a massive pain. Like, like back in the day, as if you were a healer, that was it. You were basically that was your talent tree. There was mm-hmm. no switching back because the more you did it, the more it the more cost. It cost. You. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And back in the day, it was really it was even difficult just to get a mount and and uh, riding skills. I'm not missing that at all. The, mm-hmm. Just how difficult it was to get gold because that's why there was such a huge uh, increase of, of accounts being hacked and and uh, all these Chinese gold farmers that you had. And I don't really feel like that anymore on, on any of the servers. I don't get that feeling that I'm, you know, you get spammed more for like boosting services or anything. Yeah, like man, I get the same email every day from this freaking clown and I report it every day where he's talking about selling in mythic rating and mythic yeah. plus dungeons and yeah. I, that's that's what I see now, and it had something. I mean, that's that's a part of nostalgia for me. That you know, you see someone like a tune just grinding the same mobs over and over uh-huh. again, and you go to them and just say "ni hao" and just you know, because <laughs> you, you immediately assume that's probably a Chinese gold farmer. Uh, I don't know. Is that bad? Can we say that? <laughs> yeah, of course we can. <laughs> You're just saying hi. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's not it's not a racist thing. Because for me, that's I just always thought. Well, those are are the Chinese gold sellers that are in game, yeah. and most of the times they would respond back with the same thing. And I thought, all right, so you just do you, you know, <laughs> just do your thing. Man, I remember even in Legion in Suramar, because they had uh, for the herbal. Do you say herbalism or herbalism? Herbalism. Herbalism. <laughs> we like the H. <laughs> The H, the Herb <laughs> Albert. Um, yeah, I, so picking flowers. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> there in uh, in Suramar, there was I can't remember the name of it now, but there was one flower that grew there mm-hmm. um, that was like the main one that you needed for a lot of like flasks and 
you know, crafting yeah. the, and I remember, man, cause I had the, I would get on my death knight and I would be on my sky golem mount. So death knight gave you a tiny bit of a, of a movement increase, like a pass, a passive speed increase. And then that, and then that particular mount allowed you to pick a flower without, uh, dismounting. And I would go around and you would see like, these hordes of like four, five, seven, eight, ten death knights on sky golems, just that that were just they were bots. I don't know what what the deal was, but you would just see them running the exact same pattern, and I would be like, okay, well these guys have it worked out, right? They've got the whole efficient thing going on, so I would find them and I would just follow them. And it was before flying, so I would be like, all right, let's do this, and I would just follow them around the zone. And man, they seem to have a pretty good path. And I, would, by the time I was done, I'm like, man, I got a couple stacks of these things, and either use them or sell them or whatever. But yeah, so I think I don't know the 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 gold farming thing is has certainly been cut off at the knees. I would say. I think so. Can With, you remember uh, those days when you went? Oh to yeah. Or, or a storm wind, and you saw all these corpses just appear, and they would spell out like a website or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or people use like food or feasts to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the main, I think I remember mainly the the spam, like you were saying in chat, and it would have mm-hmm. like trade markers in it, and it would be like 100,000 gold for $20. Just go to this website. And I know. I never it- did it. I was scared to death of doing it. My buddy of mine was like, oh, dude, they will, you'll get banned. Don't ever. Don't ever yeah, touch I, it, was, so. I was too scared to do any of that. I thought, even though the gold was, you know, but no, I, I just thought, I'm never going to do that. It's far too scary. Um, because you did hear all the stories about that, you know, that you needed your account or they wanted your details and things mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. And Blizzard was very much into the whole, if they found out, they would immediately ban your account. Mm-hmm. And back in the day, leveling was a hard thing, so you didn't want to throw yeah. that away. Oh, my gosh, no kidding. Yeah, I know. I, I was a few times. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't interested in it, but I would, I'd go to look up stuff on eBay, and you would see the people actually selling Warcraft accounts with leveled up characters and stuff. Yeah, that I can't believe that that was a thing back. Now that when you think about it, it's it's so ridiculous considering with how much they've improved. Do you actually miss some of those things like that? Because you know, everyone says, oh. Um, so a lot of the veterans are going, yeah, I might just play classic for a bit of nostalgia reasons, but mm-hmm. it was horrible back in my day. <laughs> <laughs> and you hear a lot of like the newer players, and I'm talking like people who really only joined Legion or or um, uh, BFA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually want to see what it was like. Um, and, you know, it might be really interesting. I think it's a more... And don't people will rip into me for this, but I think it's even a bit more of a hardcore mode Oh yeah, yeah. Um, oh, you can you can answer the same question too. But uh, I I will probably I will probably either not play classic mm-hmm. at all, or if I do, it'll be you know because I'm a couple of us are going in as as friends together just to be like oh my gosh yeah look at this you know and and, and it's it's exactly that it's nostalgia. Oh look at how the barons used to be or you know look at all this stuff. Um, <laughs> And it's like, but, oh, you want a dungeon? Well, first you need to call <laughs> for hours in Tanaris oh for attack. Oh my gosh! Yeah, see, like I, I came in after LFG, the, uh, the that, dungeon finder. Uh, honestly, was a that thing. It, I will, I will tell you something because there is something nostalgic about that because mm-hmm. it did feel like you actually that once you were in that dungeon, you really wanted to make it fucking work because there was no way <laughs> yeah, that you well, were going to put for up with that again. Yeah, and you couldn't get away with kind of being a jackass as much because, you know, if you if if you started to gain that reputation, then that was it. You weren't going, to, you weren't doing dungeons anymore. No one would take you. Exactly. Service felt smaller. Uh-huh. Well, there's a lot of nostalgia around the, the in-game community that people had. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I and I never quite experienced that. But I think one of the things that I kind of just don't it's not quite as important to me is like I was saying earlier, I have I have a super solid community of people in game that I also, you know, we live in a time now of Discord or, you know, whatever chat client you choose, right? 
where we're basically always connected and it's on your phone and and when you sit out your computer at work or whatever right like it's all right there so here, here's all these people that i interact with every day that i i don't look back and go oh man the it was so great the building building this small knit community so i could run a dungeon you know like i i like i like a lot of quality of life things and i think maybe it's just me getting older right I, i'm at the point now where like hey these talent systems are way easier oh sweet hey i don't have to go and pay the, you know hundreds of gold just to, to swap a talent i just go to a rested area which i still think you should be able to do as long as you're not in combat but like you can just swap things out you can swap specs right it doesn't yeah it doesn't you know all these things are quality of life and we can look back and I don't know if it's the rose colored glasses or whatever it is there was fun in that at the time but i'm man if you're gonna make something easier on me like and i'm not saying that like i want the content to be easier right i don't think like rating should be easier that's what lfr is for and that's mm. fine um but well in some cases i think lfr is a complete a hot mess but <laughs> uh you know what i'm kind of what i'm getting at like there's 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 ways to make the content easier if that's what you're interested in but like if you're giving me quality of life things where where you know changing talents changing specs uh leveling and all so i can try something different you know if, if i can do all these things then you know i don't i don't have as much time and energy as i did to, to play games when i before i had kids and you know all this stuff so so nostalgia is a powerful drug but i also so is so is a quality of life. Exactly. And I think that might actually be a very interesting theory. You know, it could be because we're all at least 14 years older from, or at least 10 years older from when the game was mm -hmm. really new. And yeah, I think, I think Blizzard probably also knows that a lot of their, the players that were still, are, are still around their life has changed like in a decade so much can change and mm -hmm. i think that like what you said a lot of people don't i don't have the time anymore to stand in tanners and just uh, just try to find them yeah, yeah that, no no one has time for that kind of stuff anymore and i don't want it i have better things to do and i think you know they probably bank on that and there are ways of making the game more difficult if you want to um so it's not as for the new players there's still that challenge i think but to have the challenge from classic yeah it's it's i think more a nostalgic thing of reminiscing and perhaps that others could see oh this is what people are on about and it's mm -hmm. a nice new little challenge but i i personally if the game would be released now with just or if they would say to me you know what we're, we are scrapping everything that we've done we're going back to classic that's the only one that you can play now i uh -huh. don't know if i would still enjoy it oh see and that kind of lines up with what i was saying about like i'm probably not even gonna play um i'm probably not even gonna play classic if if like in that scenario if that was my only option i i that may be the point where i'm like all right it's been a good run love you guys <laughs> I will, you know, there's lots of other stuff to do out there that is not old school WoW. Yeah, I, I think, you know, games have evolved for a reason. And um, th there's a lot of competition out there now. And you can see that some of the bigger MMOs, um, like, like for instance Final Fantasy, they've had a lot of, like, quality of life things added. So why, why would people always want to have to go do a Korean grind game if, if that's what you're really into. Oh man, yeah, that stuff exists out there if you, if you want <laughs> if it. If you just want to grind and yeah. personally I, I already hated doing certain quests in World of Warcraft just to get uh, like fire resistant gear. Oh jeez, uh, yeah. Well even even now, okay, so I'm, I'm leveling a, a Dark Iron Dwarf right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I had unlocked that and 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 I have every intention on you know seeing the stories and doing this stuff. I really want to roll a Colterran, but I've undecided on what yet. But mm -hmm. you know, so I am doing that. I did I did do the entire Jaina story on the Alliance side. Um, it does take a lot of work, but like so so playing this Dark Iron Dwarf, I'm I'm back in some of the old leveling zones again, and it's like you forgot when it was like, hey, go do this and you get get 12 of these things, right? And then the drop rate is like 
one out of every <laughs> five or six guys drops <laughs> what you're looking for. Like that's not fun. <laughs> like that's no. sitting there and you're like, man, does this boar really not have hoofs? Like I don't understand like what happened here that that I somehow cannot get hoofs off of this boar that I just can't. <laughs> It just doesn't make sense. Well, why is there no stomach? I don't understand it. Doesn't yeah, speak up. seriously. But it does have a boot up its ass, you know, things uh-huh. like that. Yep. that. I'm like, yeah. so, okay, that makes sense. Um, <laughs> yeah, I got this what? great boot out of this poor, but nope, no, no hooves. <laughs> yeah, no, I know what you mean. I mean, you know, I think the nostalgia of WoW is that I think we do have very fond memories um, of the game from when we first started, but I think we have that because otherwise we wouldn't have kept playing if the if otherwise we would have just gone yeah it's nice but uh there's better games out there so well, we, got, we got hooked because of what it is right the yeah. fantasy and i don't know there's there's the story of the game is mm-hmm. is good it's really good uh it's fun it's fun to live the story there's often times where the story itself isn't isn't told that great uh, and you know that's it's it's come a long way too. I think the storytelling now is a uh, is at a an all time high. Um, Absolutely. I just did some stuff this week. Uh, the new Vol'jin questline on the Horde side, where um, once you after you finish the Battle of Desire lore raid, then you, now you're going back in working trying to figure out with Vol'jin what's going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and some of that was just like I. I had to get out of voice chat because people were talking and I was watching these cutscenes and I'm sitting there like almost yelling at my monitor because I was like, Oh my God, you know, like (laughs) stuff was amazing stuff. Right. So we keep coming back because, (laughs) because the game is awesome. And, and I think they know that, but I, but you can't just keep making the same thing. You have to update, you have to change, you have to Mm -hmm. refresh things. You know, we've got a way, now, there's all sorts of ways to update the UI and to give yourself quality of life things. You know, there's like you said, weak ours, tell me when, all these all these little add-ons that help you perform better. But the meat of the game is that it's a really good game. It's a fun game. It's been updated. It's been refreshed. Uh, and and it and for me, as long as they keep holding up their end of the deal, I am going to keep coming back because I. It's been my favorite game now for uh, over a decade. And other games come and go, and I love other games dearly. But like WoW is always kind of like it's right there. It's my it's my home. It's my community. It's just a uh, I always look forward to it. And that's a good thing, I think. If you have to, you know, pick one thing where you have the most nostalgia from, what would it be? Hmm. Probably, probably just some of the the times and the little the the memories that I have of running certain dungeons or doing things with friends you know mm-hmm. so uh, you maybe know. the social aspect yeah I would say that uh, you know one comes to mind in particular where where uh, Taylor Huffett who was our main tank at the time uh, we were running a heroic dungeon in Cataclysm and the whole time something was wrong we couldn't figure out what the heck his dps was low he wasn't holding threat i'm like this guy was like a baller tank too i was like i don't know what's going on here oh come to find out he had not swapped he was fishing prior to the dungeon and he had was still wearing his fishing pole and fishing hat which you cannot see when you're in bear form so (laughs) he's still wearing his old gear and we're going what in the heck man what like and people are dying and we're, you know, and, and the heroics and cataclysm were no joke. You know, those no. were kind of, some of those were, were pretty rough and we're like, I don't know what's going on. And I think that was me kind of dipping my toe into healing early on. And I was like, I, I don't know, maybe I'm not the healer I thought I was. And, you know, we're sitting there struggling our way through. And after like the second boss, all of a sudden, oh, he's wearing <laughs> his fishing gear. So, you know, the, all these little these little things that happened that that's the that's the stuff that really sticks with me i like that one i like the one right let's go to the more presence uh expansion bfa yeah so if you had to pick anything what are you most impressed with at the moment with um with battle for azeroth it's got to be kind of what i was saying a minute ago um the some of the story Mm -hmm. like i mean well i think 
you've got this on your list, things that are frustrating or whatever, but um, so I won't. I won't oh, read if you want to, we can also talk about what you find really frustrating as well. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do this in reverse order. Then did you did you happen to catch uh, Talias and Inevitel's video from yesterday? <laughs> That's a lot about the whole. <laughs> yes. Oh yes. my gosh. Okay, it's funny, and I know he's, and I know, you know, I know how they are, and, and he's, and he's halfway kidding. But holy crap, that hit the nail on the head. Mm-hmm. Just talking about how annoying the uh, the desire lore experience is to just try and navigate. Oh <laughs> and gosh. Like, oh, you didn't get your seals. Oh, well, good. It's another, you know, ten minute flight down to here to get. Oh wait, no, you forgot to get your to get your. <laughs> Mythic plus cash. Oh man. Oh well. Now you. Oh wait. You want to go back over to the, to uh, to the alliance side of the, <laughs> to, to the island. Well, good. Now you can take that flight. I mean, it's it's hilarious. If you haven't seen it, uh, you guys look that up. That it was one of my one of my probably one of my favorite videos. Those two put out. That was hilarious. Um, uh, man. Now I've completely derailed myself. No, so, no. But- I, I I completely agree with that. I I would say that that is like compared to the alliance side uh-huh. it's really frustrating as beautiful as it is mm-hmm. you're a little bit like oh how do what because the, in the beginning i couldn't believe that i had to take a flight path to everything uh-huh <laughs> you're like really i have to do that? okay <laughs> but um uh, was it in that video or was somebody else saying that like it, you can kind of forgive it a little bit now looking at it and knowing now that like there's stuff that we didn't know ahead of time, right? We we didn't know that that this entire that entire horde capital city was going to be a raid. No, yeah, that was well, yeah. So some of it is you can forgive it a little more. Just going, oh okay, well, they they approached this a lot differently than than you would have expected because look, like, hey, this is going to be a raid. So mm-hmm. you maybe it was designed a little more with a raid in mind rather than. Hey, people actually have to run around here and do things. And do their daily stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, what, what what do I love about the expansion? I don't know. The Like I was saying a minute ago with the Vulgin storyline, there is mm-hmm. so much cool stuff. And it is not, you know, there was a lot of criticism. Uh, man, we were talking about this on the training dummies last week about um, this current expansion really drawing a lot of feelings out for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. People getting super angry about what happened with uh, with with the tree and everything, you know. And it was kind of it was it was a weird thing to watch. It be such a heated, polarizing thing, you know, even across social media. People getting super angry, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we're gonna burn down the tree, and then some people are like. I've played Horde for years and run Horde through and through, but I don't like what's going on here. Mm-hmm. And how that was basically like, like this very intentional experience that was crafted for us as the player base to go through. It's okay for us to to be, you know, to be like loyal to the Horde, but also be like, this is this. I don't like this. I don't like what we're doing. I, I like Sylvanas, but I don't like this. I don't like any of this. I don't mm-hmm. agree with it. Um, and it was kind of this. You see now that uh, you know stuff like the the old soldier cinematic came out, and the whole experience was a con. Like all this stuff, this wasn't like a knee jerk reaction to try and fix things because people were upset. This stuff takes months and months to yeah. to, to create these cinematics and craft these experiences, and it, it wasn't like a, oh no, what did we do? Better go back and fix it. You know, the everything that's going on, and even and even. Uh, I, I won't have, I won't say any spoilers, but even some of what we see is about to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it was it's wonderful, and I love it, and I think it's probably some of the better storytelling that I have seen. You know, we're not just we're not just like oh no, Sargeras is coming again, or it's or, another uh, baddie that we just have to yeah be- yeah. It's <laughs> not just a, a regular old baddie. It's not just oh Deathwing's going crazy. We got to stop him right. It is super intricate, super like these very detailed, uh, elaborate stories, and and I'm, and I'm loving it. I'm loving a lot of that. Yeah, I I have to say that they're doing something now to storytelling that is sometimes a little bit controversial, mm-hmm. but I think it just shows how passionate. I think if anything, we're just being pushed with our noses on it. 
to say, but look how passionate you are about your game and how much mm -hmm. you care about your characters and what they're doing and what they're being forced to do at times or have to deal with. And um, yeah, for some, I, you know, like what you said, you know, I've seen people respond very, very emotional over over social media about it, um, you know, and, and others who try to, and I'm not, this is not like a joke, but try to light that fire a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> you know, try to nice. stir the pot, basically. Too soon, um, so. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? And, and then people reacting so as if it's like a personal attack. Yes, I know. And I am I like it in a way because it just shows how much passion people have. On the other hand, I'm a little bit like, okay, okay, good girl, girl, get a grip. You know, it's not, <laughs> it's not that. It's a video uh, game still. <laughs> that's funny. But I'm, I don't know. I, um, I like it and I like all this suspense. It's like watching some television drama and just seeing, ooh, what's going to happen next? I, I like it. I don't think this is a spoiler because it's it's been out for a little bit mm -hmm. now. Um, it's it's one of the quest lines on the Horde side. I don't know. If... No, no, just go on. Okay. Um, so there there was a point, and we we kind of knew this was data mined a while back too, though that um, you know after Sarfang was 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 freed, mm -hmm. <laughs> whether however whatever your opinion is on that, whether mm -hmm. you know, Anduin setting him free or whatever. Um, but there's a point where, as a horde player, you meet, you track him down and meet up with him, mm -hmm. and uh, Zakan or Zappy Boy, as it was, like you're talking with them, and you at that point you actually have to make a choice, like mm -hmm. whether you're going to, you know, remain 100% loyal to, to Sylvanas or whether or not you kind of are. It gives you a chance to say like, I don't, I don't really think I like what's going on here, and I, and I'm not going. I'm not going to I'm not going to be full blown uh, invested in Sylvanas's plot here. So, I I had my mind made up that when I got to that point that I was going to be like team Sylvanas all the way. Mm -hmm. And not and not because I agree with everything, but because I was like, yes, yeah, let's just do this. I'm all in, right? That, yeah. That's what we're doing here. So we're playing uh we're playing a MMO or RPG. You can do things that you wouldn't necessarily do in real life or support, you know, like political or war campaigns that like you maybe don't entirely agree with, but it's a game, right? Exactly. So I was like, dude, I'm just going to down with Team Sylvanas, right? But the moment that part happened, I was like, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. I have to, I have to, I have to go with the uh, Sarfang and Zappy Boy here. I have to. And so I, uh, I clicked the button and it was like, you know, Zakan will remember. <laughs> And then it changes the the way that plot plays out a little bit, where Sarfang basically goes, "All right, well, you have to, you still have to go back and talk to Sylvanas. So, let's make this look legit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and punch you, <laughs> and, oh, nice. and you go, and you go back and talk to Sylvanas, and you tell her, you know, you tell her that you tried, but I got away, you know. <laughs> so he freaking just decks you and gives you this crazy debuff. <laughs> you go back to Sylvanas, and she's like, she's like, oh, really? He, he punched you and you got away really okay i see what's going on here you know but it's this amazing uh story like a just just the the smallest little choice there and i think you know all paths are going to lead to the same place in the end right mm -hmm. it's it's not quite the choose your own adventure book that 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 you're hoping for uh, where no. you it will probably you, be a different cut scene or something like that yeah like you know i don't know i I think I have a pretty good idea of, of where this expansion is going, and I think what what just happened there, my choice isn't going to mean a thing. But as a player, I'm like, it felt good to me to be able to go. All right, here's here's a moment for me to be able to 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 try and do what felt right, you know. <laughs> so it's things like that that are you know, and I don't think that was even in the the original release that when it was in uh when it was in beta or 8.1 whatever beta that was some feedback they got that they were able to go back and and kind of craft that experience a little differently and i love that i love the you know these opportunities to to just fine-tune that storytelling to really give us that that sense of involvement and the sense of worth in the story you know mm. yeah i agree with that um i think the storytelling is just has been brilliant 
Now, Rob, do you have any good tips for for people oh, yeah. playing Battle for Azeroth? Good tips. You know, that's uh, we've talked a lot about over the course of this show. In mm-hmm. fact, how important or how many resources are out there to be able to make the most out of what you're doing. Um, I I might recommend some podcasts. There's one called The Training Dummies that. I, I think that's right. a very good one to listen to. <laughs> uh, but there's so many communities out there. Um, Discord communities, uh, Icy Veins, Wildhead Guides, streamers at this point, you know, depending on what what's, what spec you like. Um, this is funny because up until recently, I would always, you know, share YouTube videos or streamers or whatnot, mm-hmm. Daryl, and Daryl in particular, you know. We're pretty close to the same age. I think he's like a little, like we're within a year of each other. And he's like, "What is this stuff, man? Why, why, why am I watching somebody else play this game? You know, the whole Twitch thing." And it's funny to to have seen, especially. You, I think I think you're gonna be chatting with him later. You can razz him about this stuff, but <laughs> uh, he's really come around on a lot of it. You know, where he's like, "Oh man, yeah, I was watching this." Or, <laughs> but there's so many uh, things out there that will just help you to just you know nobody wants to be told how to play their game and, and mm-hmm. this is a reoccurring theme a lot is I, I play the game how I want and that's great awesome play the game how you want but I but for me I find I actually find a lot more joy in something when I'm when I'm successful at it mm-hmm. so if you take a couple of minutes and I play a lot of classes and a lot of specs I genuinely do I play every class mm-hmm. and I try every spec in every single expansion this is something that i've always done and especially in legion with the with the individual class stories that they had laid out Mm -hmm. that was like that was like a dream for me right going into that going here's something that i like anyways but now this the reward of this is that you get to see all these amazing stories for the artifact weapons and class stories and class mounts and all these things so but some of those things, like, you know, there's certain certainly some specs that I'm like, I don't know what's going on here, right? I, don't, I haven't played this in years, or I'm not yeah. good at it. or And so you got to just utilize those resources. Go in, dig in, whatever whatever it is. There's like the quick and dirty, you know, pop up, pop up in a website, Wowhead, Icy Veins, go into their talent builds, and it'll, it'll give you the real, the real, here, just do this. And so I think you're going to have more fun and especially if you're in a group they're going to have more fun if you're mm-hmm. doing a good job I mean, it's not fun going and trying to do something and dying over and over and over so if you have a little bit of just educate yourself so if you have a little bit of a better understanding of what you're doing it's going to be it's going to be a better time all around i see so many people that are like i'm like oh man i had to whisper this guy the other day i was like hey man like i can see you're using this ability he was on a death night and it was just constantly chains of frost it, which you could see the graphic pop up and it locks the mm-hmm. target down. And I'm like, I'm like, Hey, I just whispered to him. I was like, Hey, just so you know, that is using, you know, one of your runes and which means you can't spend that rune on actually doing damage. I was like, so you don't really, you don't really need that for, for what we're doing here. And he was like, Oh, I had no idea. Like I just used it on cooldown. I'm like, yeah, all you're doing is slowing this thing or, you know, putting that on there. And it's not really helping. Mm-hmm. He's just like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. So there's just little stuff like that. I'm like, if this guy would have had, would have known, go in and look, and it'll, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of these sites will give you like a, just with the quick and dirty or TLDR, like here's a rotation or here's whatever, you know. The- yeah, and it, it helps you, I guess, to, um, y- you know, you don't have to be a professional about your your class, but just a little bit more. Okay, yeah, this is like the basics of what I should be doing, just to. Mm-hmm not slow everyone down around me and I think a lot of people are very anxious of doing any group work because they feel mm-hmm. like they don't live to up you know their character to their potential and no one is saying that you need to be top DPS but if you're somewhere in the middle or even at the bottom but it's like by a one percent or something mm-hmm. then it's not a bad thing and at least then you won't I think you know not getting yelled at or anything like that and at least you can say well i've looked into it a little bit and i know what to do now and it makes me feel a little bit more confident about my class well that's it it's the confidence right like if you Mm -hmm. feel like all right i even at a low level tune right like i'm leveling this hunter like i i went back and double checked my talents and 
oh, here's how this ability works. It's a dot, you know, and you don't, and you just refresh it when it falls off. You don't need to use it on cooldown, just refresh it when it falls off. Okay, cool. So now I know that. Now that's, you know, rather than just sitting there mashing buttons, I, I have a better understanding of what's going on and I can kind of weave that in and keep that dot up, which helps my damage, which helps everybody, you know. And it's not like a, it's not like a, some sort of thing where it's like you have to be, you know, uh, being elitist about it. You know, like not by any means, but like it just, it just feels better to do good, right? Like I'm, yeah. I'm competitive anyways. I have, I have a weak R that tracks interrupts, it, like everyone's interrupts. So <laughs> somebody's on cooldown, I can see that. Um, you know, and and we always end up trying to beat each other on interrupts all the time. You know, so uh, you got these little scenarios though. But it's also, it's not just that. It's not just being competitive. It's also, hey, I know somebody else's is on cooldown right now, and this ability's coming up that needs to be interrupted. So it's going to be on me to get that. Or I know I'm on cooldown and I can, I can say, Hey, I'm on, you know, I'm on cooldown. This need to interrupt this. You know, it's, it's all these little things and, and not everybody wants to play to that level of having their screen cluttered with all sorts of alerts and bells and whistles and, and things. But like you, you, when you do better, you feel better. And, and that leads to confidence. And, you know, the next thing you know, you're, you're that guy in the dungeons just rocking out, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And, and well, you know, I think it will increase your play enjoyment a little bit. Yeah. Right. This is always a very laden question, especially for people who have been podcasting for a very long time and who uh, have, <laughs> have, you know, talked to many people in the community. Um, but what has the Warcraft community meant to you? Uh, absolutely nothing. I cannot <laughs> stand the Warcraft community. <laughs> you know, what's funny is that's always the answer that I give. And it's funny because there's some truth to it there's always the community <laughs> like i love it i do love the community i'm not being not being mean uh there's a, there's a lot of great people out there i wouldn't be where i was right now talking mm-hmm. with you doing this show with daryl going to mexico you know taking our wives to mexico going to blizzcon every year i wouldn't none of this stuff would even be a, a reality for me if it weren't mm-hmm. for uh you know warcraft and the community um Get, man you some of y'all are just annoying whiny like just just stop <laughs> and i and i fit in that sometimes you know but like i don't know the community is it's necessary we need it we need to take care of each other you know we gotta we gotta find a way to to get over some of the stuff you know i was looking scrolling through my time timeline earlier and excuse me um some folks were like having a hissy fit about portals you know some of the portal design and where things are being moved and all. I'm like, you guys, come on. <laughs> Why is this a giant thread of people just like paragraphs and paragraphs of like ripping into each other? Like this is so unnecessary. You just get in, have fun. <laughs> well, I, I think there's, you know, two sides of every coin, unfortunately. Um, Community can be a really good thing. It can also be very uh, interesting, I guess the word would be. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm using a very political word. (laughs) (laughs) Interesting. Interesting. Polarizing. You know, like everything that happened with the Teldrassil, right? It's polarizing. Yeah. (laughs) Either you're you're like, yeah, the tree, burn it, yeah. Or you're like, oh my gosh, this is where I've spent like 15 years of my life. What are you doing? This is not okay. Yeah. (laughs) Especially when you start out as a lion's like me and you're like, Wait, <laughs> this yeah. is not. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, no, no. Okay, and now comes the weird question of the podcast, and also okay. like the final one. Uh, Rob, what is your whisper? And for those that don't know, whisper could be fairy crafting, it could be tinfoil hat, it could be anything that you want in the future from the game, or just you know any random thought out there. Don't be a dick. <laughs> That's my whisper. No, um, let's see. I don't know. I want to see uh, some tinfoil hatting, I guess. I really, really want to see this. And and I don't know, maybe it's not tinfoil hatting since we, since some of the, and they're not even spoiler, just developer content and the BlizzCon mm-hmm. releases. I really am excited to see where that hopefully battle for Azeroth, as, it, as it's named, is not Horde and Alliance battling for Azeroth, but us actually having a bigger battle to save Azeroth. I'm hope that's my, that's my what I'm really hoping mm. for. 
I think there's a lot of the cool stuff coming up with the old gods. You know, we keep seeing little mm-hmm. little uh, glimpses of that. And I know, especially with this little mini raid coming up, there's a lot of there's a lot of really neat stuff that's about to happen. So I'm I'm excited to see where this story goes and that it's not the generic horde versus alliance battle for Azeroth that we have been kind of immersed in so far. Okay. That vo- oh, I'm looking for I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. That would be cool. Right, Rob, it was amazing talking to you again. If people want to follow you and want to follow the training dummies, where can they find you and your podcast? Oh, man. If for some reason after hearing this you still want to... Of course they do. <laughs> uh, Twitter is probably the easiest place, and everything kind of branches out from there. Uh, it's mm-hmm. just at Rob Copeland. Um, I'm on there, and then if you do any sort of Google search for the training dummies, you'll find our uh, the website. It's just thetrainingdummies.com. And that has all links to all the socials and Twitch and all that stuff on there. Perfect. And I will make sure that that all goes into the show notes. Thank you. Rob, thank you so much for being a guest. It's been far too long, but I hope that we'll talk more in the future again. Thank you, Syl. You are so sweet. Thank you so much for, for inviting me. I really appreciate it. You're you know, very welcome. There's times where like you've been around this community for so long that uh, it's just weird, like the you know a lot of a lot of faces have come and gone but to still still know that like some of those old folks are still relevant you know (laughs) exactly i don't (laughs) like that (laughs) so i hope you enjoyed that interview and like i said we we talked about you know classic and nostalgia so of course i posted this question on twitter and let's go to the first one I asked, which was, are you going to go and play Classic when it comes out? So this is what you guys replied. Fabri said, I remember hating the game because of how slow everything felt. I pushed through the through thanks to a friend that helped my hand in lower levels. Especially because back during Vanilla, the game wasn't in Spanish and I didn't handle English at all that well. I'm wondering if you would be happy to go back to Classic that way then. Um, I, I think they, they would have the game in Spanish then. I don't think they would um, only have it in English. I think uh, you will get your designated language servers, hopefully. Jordan said, as someone who joined at Legion launch, I remember uh, Gilneas, Teldressel and Darkshore, as well as Anduin's theme, which was one of the first songs from WoW I've heard, being around the beginning of, of the lo- uh, Legion login screen music. That's really cool. Um... I think music plays a very big role in, in you know, getting your feelings for the game um, back at you. So, so I remember for myself, and this is also, I guess, a little bit of nostalgia for me. You know, when I rolled my first Night Elf, the music is amazing in Teldrassil um, or Teldrassil, depending how you want to call it. Um, but yeah, Teldrassil, I really, really was like oh my god the colors are amazing and i'm an elf and i'm running around and there's all these forest creatures and the music is amazing and um and then i i came into Darnassus and i was like wow the starting area is nothing compared to to seeing this especially when the bank just pops up um and it, it, it sounds you know the music swells and everything and it's it just feels really really cool and i think that's my fondest memory of classic really um but you guys said more, of course. <laughs> Sai said, too many questions for one tweet, but long story short is yes, I will play. I started back then and I have been hooked ever since. And Balfra said, no interest in classic, I prefer to live in the present. So that's a little bit like 50-50 for most people, I think. Some people would like to check it out, others won't. I, I guess I will check it out when classic comes out. I just want to see um, if those rose-colored goggles are still there, or if I'm actually like, you know what, it was shit. (laughs) I don't want to do this anymore. Now, a little bit about the nostalgia stories. Um, You guys had many things to to respond to the question. What makes you nostalgic when you think of World of Warcraft? You know, what memories do you have that are very, um, very important to you when you played back in the day? So Sai said the music in Teldrassil, or Teldrassil and Elwyn. Uh, every time I go back to those zones, it takes me right back to being a noob and exploring those areas for the first time. I have the exact same feeling, so <laughs> I get the exact same feeling from, from Teldrassil. Um, Fabri, setting foot in Northrend for the first time. 
Yeah, that could be pretty epic, depending on where you were. I think for War 2, you, um, you know, boat or zeppelin. Um, and I have to say, going there by boat was more epic. Uh, as a lion's. <laughs> I think it was both boats, wasn't it? Yeah, it was both boats, but I, I um, didn't start. Oh god, I can't remember the area I started. Um, it's on the, um, the western side, I want to say. That's where, where also where the Pita guys are, or, or Dita, I think. Uh, that's where I was. And yeah, it does feel really epic coming on there and just being like, oh my god, what, what's going on here? It's a completely new area and, and there's so many undead and snow. <laughs> and yeah, I, I remember those days. I remember them fondly. Uh, Ryan in Wrath, running around at 3 a.m. Sackling, uh, sacking the Alliance capital cities and taking it, um, the leaders to get my bear mount. You get a bear mount? For, for doing that? Ah, oh, okay, I didn't know that. Uh, Grand Nagus, Epic Warlock, Mount Quest, plain and simple, and I think Paladins have to do that in the day as well. And I think you had to have a shit ton of resources, didn't you, for, for all of that. I don't think it was that easy of getting things for free. But, um, yeah, I've heard it was really epic. That would be interesting to do in um, in Classic, if, if people want to experience that. Exclavier said Pandaria. Mop was my first expansion to wait for and play as it began since I started during Cat. It's where I also began playing with CTR guildies and I have the fondest group memories. Frasley said Duskwood especially, I leveled many an alt there, not many made it out. Is that because you like staying in Duskwood or because, you know, there were a lot of like scary mobs that killed your characters? <laughs> I'm just curious. Um, Kai Sharky Boy said, I would say uh, the Az Azura Mist Isles. The most tranquil starting zone in Azeroth reminds me of the first time I booted up the Burning Crusade. Yeah, that's true. I also rolled the Draenei immediately uh, when it came out. And that's, yeah, it, it, I do love the Draenei starting area. It's really pretty. Same for the, uh, for the, for the Blood Elves, really. Um, Valeria said, a Blood Elf starter area and ever song woods. My first character was a Blood Elf and I've leveled many since then. Kalfalas feels like home. Like I said, you know, the Blood Elf area is also one of those. I love running around there and it really hasn't had much of an update since, um, not even since Kala, I think. So, yeah, I completely understand where you're coming from. She continues, up to the day, uh, up to today, the Lament of the Highborn is one of my favorite music pieces from WoW music as well due to this. That was really something special, wasn't it? When you would find that quest item, had to bring it to Sylvanas, and you would get that whole Lament of the Highborn. If you have not done that, I would definitely do that. That's that's an experience on its own. So the Morally Grey podcast said, probably one of my earliest memories that could never happen now was I got a new weapon drop and I was about level 11. I proceeded to get in a fight with a random level 10 mob and nearly die. Then I looked down at my chat window to see my weapon skill was non-existent with maces. <laughs> yeah, I um, I remember those days. It was always interesting when you thought, oh yeah, you have a new type of weapon, I'll equip it. And then you do no damage because you, you are not trained in it. So you either have to start hitting like critters or something or really low levels um, just to get up your skill. Um, Fatori? said stepping into Redridge Mountains uh, and Duskwood for the first time and just seeing the contrast, then watching maximum level players run by on their horse on their way to kill a dragon. Shit was epic. I have to admit, that is pretty epic. Um, Cause you know, you're at your low level, you see high level players and, and they are off and you might imagine that could be me, but yeah. Sometimes I miss those days, I really do miss those days. Um, let's see if we can pull some uh, some really, like, what was it again? Those those mobs that just wanted like world bosses that got dragged over to Stormwind <laughs> and killed everyone. I don't know if that's possible in the new classic that they're going to bring out, but it will be interesting to uh, to test that fairy out. And Bolfra said, I think of my orc warrior falling out of Thunder Bluff multiple times. I think we've all experienced that. 
Uh, I remember in my days as Alliance, we got knocked back a lot from the platforms on uh, Thunder Bluff <laughs> by the Horde. <laughs> so yeah, that was uh, all good fun, right? <laughs> so that was a lot of nostalgia and a lot of classic talk. And I will leave you with one more story for, you know, a little bit of drama. I think, uh, well, I guess it could cheer some people up or it might go a bit like, what the fuck just happened there? Anyhow, so Veronica emailed and said, we had the Shadow Priest back in Burning Crusade. Now, at the time, we were working on um, Black Temple. We were on Mama Shazra's and everyone had to beef up there. SR for that fight. Now the crafting match for the best shadow resistant gear dropped from the raids. So of course they went into the guild bank and the guild tailor would provide um, the shadow resistant to the cloth wearers and what have you. I happened to have a few of the raid drop components on me because I was ever the diligent raider. So the GM just spotted me the last remaining mats. I needed to craft my set on my own and not harass the guild tailor. Back to the shadow priest. Well, apparently he and the guild tailor had beef, and when he found out I got to craft my own stuff, he threw the biggest tantrum I have ever seen. He started cussing out the guild leader, and pretty much everyone else in the guild. Keep in mind, the shadow resistant gear and the potions were provided at no cost to the raiders. But his thing was, I can't wear gear made by the guild tailor. This game is all about image, and I can't be seen wearing gear with crafted by Gil Taylor on it. He then went on to say the nastiest, most sexist, racist, homophobic shit to pretty much everyone. Obviously he got kicked and we all had a good laugh at him and that was that. He wasn't as necessary as he thought he was. So come raid time that week we were ready to down Mama Shazra's and move on to the next encounter. But there he was in our raid because he had the raid ID. So we're trying to down Mama Shaz with this troll in the midst trying to sabotage our run and saying in yell how sorry he was and he was only doing this to punish the guild tailor and the GM. He got himself blacklisted from every raiding guild on the server that day and completely dragged on the forums. That, my friends, is some epic kill drama. Why on earth would it matter if you're... Like that whole, you know, that you have an image to uphold. Are you kidding me? Does it really matter that your your gear is made by someone else that you might possibly have beef with? Like, be happy that you get it for free. I don't, I don't understand um, this way of thinking from people. I really, really don't. It's it's a it's a freaking game, people. So yeah. And then the fact that he was in that raid because of that raid idea and tried to, you know, pull shit. Like honestly. Not clever, especially not during burn, Burning Crusade days when, um, you know, you you were still so tied to your server. So, yeah, that is a, a very, very dramatic story, Veronica. Now, if you have stories, then please send them to me. I know, you know, I'm not going to... Uh, some people have asked me and, and uh, or have said, you know, that they normally go to Preach. And I'm all for that because Preach does it so much better than me. I'm just doing it for a quick and dirty little thing in between that you hear some drama or some raid drama, guild drama, whatever. Anything that's a little bit like, what the fuck just happened? Just for comic value, I guess, or just, again, making you not feel you're not alone. There are more people who are experiencing the douchebags out there. Um, so, you know, don't despair. You're not the only one who, who has to deal with it. But if you have a really great story, I'm also happy to hear those. But if you want to send them, please send them to me. If you want to send them to Preach, please do. <laughs> because I'm sure Preach can do a much better job of it than me. But I'm happy with reading out all your stories. Happy ones or, or whatever you want to share. Um, and yeah, so you, you can do that by sending it to the following things. Now I always need to look for this because uh, I'm very bad at remembering my own stuff. That that's, tells a lot about my brain. So you can find everything on whispersofwar.poppy.com, of course, the old shows, the show notes, if you need to look up some names and, and links and things like that. Twitter, you can contact me um, on Twitter, of course, at whispers underscore of underscore war. My personal one is at McMonkeys with a Z. Or you can, of course, email the show at whispersofwarpodcast at gmail.com. 
Next week, I'm talking to the lovely um, Dungeon Fables and Ali from that. So you have a lot of lore stuff to get through uh, because we talk a lot about dungeons and the lore about it. I, I really, really am looking forward to that interview. So have a lovely time in Azeroth. I'm going to do my best to uh, to get halfway through all my reps, uh, I guess, because I, I, I'm, on a, I'm on a deadline. Have a great time in Azeroth, guys, and I will see you all next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>